Hi, family. I hope everybody woke up on the right side of bed this morning, whatever that means. <laughs> People say, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. If you woke up, honey, you on the right side. So that's a great start. I am out here at the park. I had not been to this park in so long. When I tell you I have had some stuff going on, some trials happening, it's real. <laughs> And I fell off with taking care of myself as far as getting sunlight and movement and fresh air. This park here, I live here. <laughs> so I haven't been here in a long time. This feels so good. I was like, I'm going to the park this morning. And now I work a night shift where I go to work at 4.30. So sometimes I can get off as late as 2.30, 3 a.m. And of course, you're not in the mood to jump up early and run out here. Plus, I help my daughter with my grandson in the mornings. So, he just started daycare, which is a blessing. He goes two times a week. Just dropped him off and dropped her back home so she can work. <laughs> and I have some free time. My boo is asleep. It's all about me right now, y'all. All about me. <laughs> it feels so good to be back out here. I love the park. I love nature. I like being outside. If I could live outside, I would morning but then all the mosquitoes would attack me <laughs> but anyway y'all i am so grateful i feel so happy today y'all don't even know who's this happy to exercise me <laughs> but anyway i had promised you all i figure i'll walk and talk i'm gonna be out of breath because it's been a minute and it's kind of like hilly out here i love it it's so gorgeous and peaceful but i had promised to do a video in reference to my grandmother's I want to talk about my grandies this morning. You know, they were a very big part of my growing up, an intricate part of my learning process, especially concerning the things of God. Those two ladies, you know, they were soldiers for the Lord. I loved them so dearly and had a great respect and admiration for them because they didn't just talk the talk, they actually walked the walk, literally, right? So... I'm very proud to say I had two had two beautiful grandmothers who were beautiful inside and outside. <laughs> and I remember years ago in church for Black History Month, I was asked to do a presentation. And usually when you do presentations for Black History Month, it's usually for people who we don't know personally, but we know worldwide because they're popular because of their works on the earth, right? And she said, why don't you give me two of your sheroes? And I said, hmm. I said, okay. That would be my grandmother's. <laughs> Those sheroes would be my grandmother's. So that's what I did my assignment on. And in the process of doing that, because we really don't dig a lot. We don't, I don't think a lot of us think to sit down at the feet of our grandparents and ask them questions. They are living history books. And we miss out on so much information. And this gave me the opportunity to go deeper with my grandmothers. My grandma Esther, which is my mom's mother, she used to love to talk. Her and her friend, her friend sister Cox, which is like the second grandmother to me. They would tell me things about growing up and how they had to wash ceilings and walls. And when they cleaned house, they cleaned house from top to bottom, literally. <laughs> and how we slept so long and we, they didn't get a chance to do that. They had to get up before the crack of dawn and, you know, their lives in the South as little girls. How they had to work or how we were lazy and we stayed in the bed till the afternoon. I did. I used to sleep so late back in the day when I was a teenager. I did not like getting up in the morning. I would sleep until 11, 12 o'clock if you let me. But they were telling me that they didn't do things like that. They learned to cook, you know, very early in life. They did laundry. They were working, right? So she'd already had these types of conversations with me, but I needed to be a little more in-depth. I wanted a little more. So I was able to call them both up and ask them what was going on in their day as far as the racial tensions. What did they experience and 
did they come up poor? Did they really lack a lot of finances and were they struggling and stuff like that? Because these were questions I never thought to ask my grandmothers until I was faced with doing this project, right? And come to find out <laughs> the things I had in my head, because we always see slave movies and things like that. So we assume that every black person, especially in their day, experienced those things. And neither of my grandmothers experienced those things. And I was shocked <laughs> to hear that. Of course, there was segregation. There was a lot of, um, you know, can't use this fountain, can't go to this bathroom, can't go to this restaurant, go to this part of the bus. They experienced those things, but they never experienced anything where, good morning, they had never experienced anything where somebody was outright disrespectful to them and calling them the n-word <laughs> and I was really surprised to hear that you know so and neither of them grew up poor funny thing is they had more growing up than their kids had and they had moved here from the south well not here I'm in Georgia <laughs> I'm thinking I'm still in New York they had moved to New York from the south because everybody had this idea of the city life being the best life right but they actually grew up well, more well off than my parents did. Their parents owned property, farms, and my grandma Courtney's father was fish. He owned a store, and this man didn't even have a high education, okay? He was an entrepreneur. Same thing on my grandma Jackson's side, which is my dad's mom, Grandma Queen B, Beatrice. She grew up, she lost her dad, but her stepfather had a farm. Her mother used to... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, jaw products. So they was they were doing well. They did well. They came up okay. So these ladies are so powerful in my life. It was so good getting more details. And of course, I asked them intimate details about how they met my grandfathers. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. What I wanted to talk about is how extraordinary they were in my life, and how blessed I was to know them and have them. And that everything that I am today, I owe a lot of it to them. And a lot of people don't like to say things like that. Don't want to give credit to people shaping them and molding them. But there's no way in the world I would not be able to do something like that. I have to give them credit. <laughs> of course, the Most High God is my everything. And if not for Him, I wouldn't even be here. But He placed people in your life to help you along the way. And so... I was blessed to have these two beautiful souls in my life, man. And I'm going to tell y'all some stuff that probably sounds funny, but it means a lot to me. When I was a little girl, I remember always seeing them practicing with their preach. Practicing with their preach. They always was friendly to everybody, always cordial, always telling people about the Lord everywhere we went. <laughs> When you're young, you get embarrassed, which is funny. Why are we so embarrassed about the Lord? Why? The rest of the world look at it as being corny or silly. And so you feel that when you're a child, you're embarrassed, <laughs> which is insane. Because I'm so bold for Christ now. I could never believe I would see the day where I was bold for him like this. But hey, here I am. Thanks to Esther and Beatrice. They were the greatest examples my grandma Beatrice Jackson, which is my dad's mom, she always walked, she walked like this, literally. She was very regal. Her head was always up, her chin was always raised. And she had this air of royalty about her. I always said that. That's Queen B. Even when she sat in her chair, she had a particular chair. I always said that's the Queen's chair. <laughs> that lady, man, let me tell you something. She had a group of friends who were prayer warriors and they would gather at her house. And when they prayed, you were shook. You felt the power of that prayer. And I remember her saying, you wanna join us? And I'd be like, no grandma, that's okay. Uh, honey, <laughs> I was in the other room. Their prayers were going up. Let me tell you, this lady prayed <laughs> like nobody's business. And she had a reason to. She had family who were not living their lives the way the Lord would prefer. And she covered us in those prayers, honey. Really did. Those prayers were deep and they were heartfelt and the Father heard her. And me and my cousin Reggie, we talked about that like last year, <clears throat> how 
we feel like their prayers are still covering us. Still. The Lord hears you and he always hears. He's not going to just turn a deaf ear or forget the prayer that you prayed. So <clears throat> the scripture says the prayer of the righteous avail is much. And honey, I had two praying grandmothers. Two. You talk about blessed. You talk about blessed. <laughs> Grandma Jackson was something else, boy. When we would go to church with her, sometimes she would make us some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and the church would give us like some little juice, and we'd have a little snack after church. We'd want to go home, of course. But honey, she was like, no. We're going to go to the nursing home. And she was the sweetest thing. She wasn't a rough lady at all. Very sweet. Very gentle. You know, had a nice soft touch, but she was strong. Her strength was in her sweetness. And she was like, no, we're going to go visit the nursing home. We're going to go visit the nursing home, which was a good experience to show you that there are other people in need and that you can care for other people besides just the people in your family or maybe your little friends that you know. So she had taken us for her to the nursing home, a group of friends from the church. We would all go and she had us singing. So that was my debut, <laughs> singing in the public. So she would have us singing this little light of mine. All little cute little songs that children learn when they're in church really early. So she had us singing those things to the elderly people. And I remember them enjoying it, you know. Music is something that is really powerful. And especially when you're singing praises to the Father. So Grandma taught us that very early. On Sabbath nights, there were no watching TV. She didn't play. Turn that TV off. It's time for worship. Friday sunset. And we would get together. And we would just talk. And I loved it because that was my opportunity to ask my grandmother questions about the Lord. Things you're curious about when you're a child. And, you know, my parents didn't raise us that way. They were raised to know the Lord and to, to understand the Bible and things like that. But, you know, you grow up, sometimes you do your own thing. <laughs> but I had my grandmother's praise the Lord. So grandma stepped in. And she was not having it, honey. She was teaching us what thus said the Lord at all times, okay? <laughs> and it was a great experience because the world teaches you so much crazy stuff. I went to school and I had them telling us that we've evolved from monkeys and stuff like that. And I'm like, what? And I remember when I told Grandma Jackson what I was taught in school. And she calmly said, <laughs> now you know you weren't made from no monkeys. <laughs> You weren't made from no monkeys. The Lord formed you from the dust of the earth. He made you with his own hands. And that's where we come from. And she said, there's no such thing as people coming from uh, being uh, evolved from, uh, from animals. Two separate species. Yes, honey. So my grandmother had it in her heart to tell us the truth so that we could not be fooled. You know, because people will tell you anything. This world is so full of lies. And the Bible is our truth base, our base basis of truth, right? So she taught us that. So I remember going to school <laughs> and this teacher, his name was Mr. Rubenstein, Jewish, Jewish, right? He was teaching us that foolishness in social studies class that we came from apes, that we involved. So because grandma already established in my head and heart who I was and how I was created, that didn't fly with me. So <laughs> I remember raising my hand because the Holy Spirit impressed me to ask this question. I was only in the sixth grade. Or was it seventh? So he kept talking about how we evolved from monkeys and blah, blah, blah. So I'm saying to myself, if that's truly the case, why are there still monkeys? So this little fresh girl raised her hand and I asked him. But of course he could not answer me, right? He couldn't answer me. He ignored me. He said, Miss Jackson, I guess he thought I was going to say something in reference to the foolishness that he was teaching us, but I was going against it because my grandmother taught me better. So, <laughs> needless to say, I shocked him and he continued on with the lesson. He didn't answer me because he, he has no answer. If we evolve from monkeys, then every monkey should be a person by now, right? Thank God for grandma. Grandma was such a pleasant soul, real sweet. She loved worshiping. I was surprised when I used to go to church and sometimes to see her shouting out and um, crying and stuff like that because she was always like a quiet soul. She's just very soft spoken. So I would look at her sometimes and be like, Grandma, oh, she's a little excitable. She loved the Lord. <laughs> 
She loved the Lord and it showed in her actions. We were at church. She was always praising. Amen. And she would sometimes sob a little bit and she was praising the Lord. It was a pleasure having grandma like that. And there's so much more to tell. I can't tell it all. My whole life, she just passed away two years ago. I'm 53. So I had my grandmother for 51 years. 51 years. And it was such a blessing. Even when the last time I went to spend the night with her, <laughs> she would still treat me like a little girl. And you always feel like you're a child around your grandmamas. I remember I was in the chair dozing off. And she said in her little soft voice, Kenya. She called me just like that. Kenya. I miss that. <laughs> and I said, yes, Grandma. She said, come on now. Get ready for bed because you're sleepy. <laughs> Mind you, I'm somebody's grandma myself now. But let me tell you something. You're always a kid to your grandmother. That's respect and that honor that you have when you're a child. You never lose it. How you doing? And so it was just a blessing. And I slept in the bed with my grandma. And I treasure those times because I knew she was coming up in age. And it could have been any day. She was getting weak. You know, the Lord blessed her with a good long life. And she was still herself in her mind. She had her mind. She always said that. She always wanted to have her right mind. And she did. God is so good. And let's talk about Grandma Esther. Queen Esther a little bit here. Now, Queen Esther, <laughs> Queen Esther was a feisty little soul. Another soldier for the Lord. She loved the Lord, honey. Let me tell you something. It was never a time that she came back from church that she didn't tell you what the pastor talked about. Oh, y'all missed a good sermon today, let me tell you. And the pastor was talking about this, that, 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 and she broke it down. And sometimes you'd be like, because <laughs> a lot of times you just don't want to hear it. Come on, man. It's just crazy when you're young. What's important to you? But these things are important. Your creator who made you. And my grandmother was like, mm, I'm going to put that in your face. <laughs> and I respect her for that. She wasn't taking no shorts when it comes to that. She was like, mm -mm. you're going to know who your Lord and Savior is. You're going to know who the God of creation is. And she would brag about him all the time. And when we walked down the street, she'd say hi to everybody. And it used to anger me because it was a particular neighbor who did not speak to my grandmother. And that used to make me so upset. <laughs> I'm like, Grandma, what you speaking out for? She said, child, I'm not going to act ugly because other people are acting ugly. i got to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, she don't speak to you, Grandma. That teenage attitude. How you feeling? And I don't like it. So she said, yeah, girl. I had to represent the Lord at all times. And so she wasn't going to be nasty because people are nasty. Sometimes the only Christ you see is in another person. So you have to be his representative. And Grandma was a great example of that, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> but when it came to her family, she was no nonsense. She was going to put her nose or up in your business because we were her business. And she was responsible for us. And she loved us. And she was going to always tell you something to correct you, whether you wanted to hear it or not. This was her adult children, my mother included, <laughs> on down to her grands. She always had something to say, something to share. And sometimes we would get upset. And then she would get her feelings hurt and say, well, I only want what's best for y'all. I'm not trying to make no trouble. And it was the truth, you know. It was the truth. And I'm a lot like her. <laughs> The funny thing is I'm a combination of my grandmothers. I know when to hold back. But sometimes I get adamant and like, Ugh! and that's Grandma Copney. But when I hold back, I'm Grandma Beatrice. <laughs> I think I'm a nice balance of the two of them. Because when you love people, you don't allow them to just do things that's crazy when you know it's not right. You don't sit back and be quiet about it. And that was grandma. She's not going to be quiet. <laughs> if she's telling you to do something, it's because it's for your own good. And she's going to put her two cents in. Bless the Lord for her two cents. Because I stacked it up. I was banking those two cents. <laughs> and it helped to make me who I am. Man, I'm so grateful for her. Another thing she used to do that used to crack me up. That cracks me up as I think about it now. But back then... <laughs> We used to get up in the morning 
<laughs> whenever we stayed around, because it was times that, you know, we, we went back to grandma. We lived with grandma. And you live in her house, honey, you're going to have morning devotion. Yes, you are. So we at the table getting ready for school. She would fix breakfast, too. She was such a sweet lady. Her grandma used to throw down, okay? Grandma Esther, she threw down. Everything. Her meatloaf, her cakes, her pies. Man, her biscuits. Her peach cobbler. Her bread pudding. Her turkey wings. Her fried fish. Her pancakes. <laughs> Let me tell you something. She always said I was greedy. And then she said, when I got older, you gaining too much weight. I said, who introduced me to all this good food, Grandma? That's on you. <laughs> that lady used to throw down, man. I love to eat. I love to eat her food. <laughs> and the bad, sad thing about it is I used to be in the kitchen with her while she was baking. Did I learn a thing? <laughs> I don't bake. I was waiting for it to be done so I could eat it. <laughs> I was waiting for it to be done just so I could eat. Greedy. I said, Grandma, how long that's going to take? Watching her knead the dough and do this. And she's going to make all her cakes and everything from scratch. Her ice and everything. Her pineapple coconut. Mm. Her marble cake. Mm. Don't you, nobody can hang with Grandma. Nobody can hang with Grandma. And I know it was disappointing to her. Like, y'all don't cook. Y'all don't sew. These are the things she would install on us as women. These are things we should do. As virtuous women who have a good husband, you get your good man, you got to treat your good man well. And you take care of your kids well. Sewing, cooking, these things are a part of womanhood. And they really are. And we let society tell us that they're not now. So we don't even engage in these things. We don't try to learn these things. And they're important. You know how much money you can save if you know how to sew? <laughs> Grandma didn't play. She sue. She sue. Is that the right way? This us it. She sue. She had sewn. <laughs> Hats, coats, her whole outfits. Grandma used to be, she was the bomb, okay? The bomb.com, Queen Esther. Queen Esther was a real queen, let me tell you. She did her thing in the kitchen, and it was important to her to have these gifts and use them as a woman. As a woman, it was very important to her. And another thing I was saying I was laughing about now is that in the mornings we would do devotion while she served us breakfast she would open up her little watch what was it morning watch why can't i remember shouldn't be forgetting that and she would read us the scripture for the day that went along with some type of story some scenario that would help us through difficult times to choose to do the right thing she would read those things to us in the morning and then we'd be rushing we grab our book bag okay we gotta go she ha, 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 ha. We're like grandma what you know you don't leave my house without prayer. <laughs> you know what kind of world we living in. You don't leave this house without being covered by prayer. That's right. <laughs> so the next step, at that door, bow your head. We like, man, it's like you don't even know what's good for you when you're a child. <laughs> you have no idea what is the best for you. Just dumb. And that's why we need people to train us, our adults to train us the right way, the way we should go. So that we are grown, we won't depart from it. And I ain't departing from it. I'm clinging to it. <laughs> These are the things that make me, that made me who I am. Beautiful grandma, Queen Esther, Queen B. I have so many stories to tell, but I don't want to bore y'all. But I had to shout them out because this is the anniversary of their death. They both passed away two years ago, a week apart. Ain't that something? A week apart. And so I thought about them. I think about them all the time. When they first passed, it was so strange. They locked that off over there? I guess so. I don't want us to go that way. Um, when they first passed, it was so hard to accept because I've had them so long. 50 something years I've had them and now they're not here and I was always accustomed to praying for them the way they prayed for me you know so I would be praying and I was like Lord and I said oh Lord they're not here no more I was so accustomed to praying for them it was kind of hard to stop <laughs> it was hard to stop after they were gone but they put that in me you pray obey do right by people. Behave yourself. Be polite. These are the things they taught me. 
And that stuff trickled down because I taught my, my daughters. It's no way I could have been in their presence and didn't pick up on some good things. It's no way. I was trained by these ladies. I watched them. And another thing that really makes me proud of my grandmothers, I didn't see them laying down with a whole bunch of men. Not that they was gonna let me see it, but I'm just saying, there was no men in and out in my age group, you know, when I was growing up seeing them. And those ladies, they was, they was strict, strict, I'm not gonna say religious, cause I don't like to use that word. They were just strict in their ideas and ideals. They never even wore a pair of pants. <laughs> I've never seen those ladies wear a pair of pants. They were funny. Pantyhose in the hot summertime. I'm like, Grandma, it's so hot for all of that. <laughs> I used to tell both of them that. It's so funny. I was very outspoken. And I loved to tease and mess with my grandmothers. I loved and adored them. And I would just say stuff. And... Grandma Coltney was a little more prudish <laughs> than Grandma, well, Grandma Esther, I'm going to say, call them by their first name. Grandma Esther was a little more prudish, and she would say, oh, girl, stop that. If I said something that, you know, teasing her, telling her she flirting with somebody or whatever, she go, oh, cut that out. <laughs> and Grandma Beatrice, on the other hand, as soft-spoken as she was, she would entertain any conversation, any conversation, which I enjoyed. <laughs> She would entertain any conversation I wanted to have with her. She would engage. <laughs> and she was so calm and proper. She'd just be like, well, you know. And then she'd just go off in her discussion about whatever topic I chose to talk about. I love those ladies, man. I miss them so much, you know. And it was kind of hard seeing them get weak. Because I remember them in their heyday when they were strong and powerful. And it reminds me that the Most High God gives us a certain amount of time. And that's why he wants you when you're in your youth. Because he can use you the most. Because you're strong. You're powerful. You're able and capable. And Satan wants to destroy us when we're young. He wants us to do foolish things. He wants us to say, oh, I'm young. I'm a party. I'm going to act a fool. I'm going to have sex with who I want to have sex with. I'm going to drink. I'm going to experiment with drugs. I'm going to do all these foolish things that could take me out like that. You know? Something can wipe you out in an instant that you won't get to see yourself as an adult, as a mature adult that decides to give your heart to the Lord. And I'm saying that because I'm talking about myself. I remember thinking stupidly like that because I knew serving the Lord was the best thing to do, right? But it was something that old people did in my crazy young mind, right? <laughs> it wasn't for young people. Young people go to enjoy their life, partying and doing whatever, being free to be dumb, right? So I thought like that up until I was like 27, was it 26, when I started to have anxiety attacks. And I'm going to discuss that in another video because one thing at a time. But it didn't dawn on me until then that what if you don't live to see 50? Because in my head, 50 was a good ripe age to start to serve the Lord. Yes, that is the dumb thoughts that came in this girl's mind that girl's mind <laughs> that when I turn 50 I'm going to give my heart to God because that's a good age the Lord had plans for me he was like oh yeah that's what you think you're going to do <laughs> yeah okay it didn't happen that way praise the Lord and I'm just grateful because my grandmothers were instrumental and in creating who I am how are you who, who shaped me into the person that I am today and I'm so grateful for them man I'm just like they are a part of me. So when people say things like, people don't die, I understand it in a different way. The body is dead. They're no longer conscious. They're consciously here with us. But who they are is embodied into who you are. They have become a part of you. So in that case, they will never die. And as long as we teach what they taught, none of us will never die. We would live on in each other in a righteous way living righteously doing what thus said the lord and teaching our babies the way the father god intended for us to teach them we are royal righteous people family and we have gone so far from the lord and it breaks my heart when i think about the crazy things that i've done and then i'm here now 
and I think on it, it's like, man. But I give him praise and glory for, for training me up and placing people before me to teach me and show me, especially those those Grammys of mine, those sweet grandmothers of mine. Um, I'm a blessed woman. I'm a blessed woman, and I'm counting all of my blessings. And here I am, somebody's grandma. And um, I would love for my grandchildren to admire me the way I admire my grand my grandmothers. I mean, the things that they used to do that I always saw them in their Bible. It wasn't one day that I did not see them studying. And I'm, I'm telling y'all, they were in that word. They were in that word morning and night. Grandma Jackson used to fall asleep with the Bible on her lap. <laughs> I haven't graduated to that point yet where I'm in my Bible twice a day as soon as I wake up and before I go to bed. I want to get there. I'm striving for that. Because that word is important. And the more you read it, the better you behave. Because you're reading the principles of the Most High. And you're seeing the footsteps of Christ. And that prompts you to do better. The more you read this word and with understanding, the better your life will be. You will make better choices. And you will strive for the perfect the perfect mark <laughs> and people say nobody's perfect but the bible tells us to strive for perfection i think people just forget what's in the word the bible tells us to strive for perfection you can't go into the kingdom with any sins we have to lay them down and it is possible christ showed us that we can live a sinless life yes we're not christ but he put himself in the form that we are of the dust of the ground in human form flesh and blood so that he can feel our pains so he can show us how are you this morning love your hat <laughs> it feels so good to be outside amongst people I'm a people lover and my grandmothers were too they love people love to talk to them I love people and I enjoy being around people and I know we live in a world full of sick people and a lot of people can get on your nerves or whatever but we all have something about us that's annoying. Every last one of us, right? And so we just have to learn to be a kinder to each other and accept people for who they are. Because everybody wants to be loved and everybody wants some attention. <laughs> and I learned that from my grandmothers, you know. I am so grateful and blessed. I am the grandmother of three beautiful children my grandbabies, my grand candies, and I am in awe that the Lord allowed me to get to this point in my life that I could see such a thing. Because when I was young and thinking crazy stuff like, oh, I'm going to do this when I get older. Oh, I didn't imagine that I would actually live to see the day that my daughters grew up. They're 30. How old are they? 33 and 31. And they bless me with grandchildren. The Lord blessed their wombs to grow fruit. <laughs> and so I'm reaping the benefits from that right now. And so that example that my grandmothers blessed me to see, allowed me to see, I want to be that for my grandchildren. I want to be that. I want them to say, my grandmother was a righteous, holy lady. And she was sweet. And she was a good listener. <laughs>